What's up my brozones? Welcome to the Ozone and welcome to another episode of Ow, oh, my feeling. Today we've got something huge to talk about and it's not my dick. In order for some of you to fully understand what I'm talking about in this video, you're going to need to forget everything that you know about Five Nights at Freddy's. I'm going to do my best to talk to you about the different types of energies in FNAF and why they're so important. Forget everything you know about Agony. Forget everything you know about Remnant and how Freddy's animatronics work. I'm about to take you through this video right from the beginning. Speaking of the beginning, is this the first time you're seeing one of my videos? If so, then welcome. If you enjoy this video, then don't forget to subscribe for more. Uh, I am so goddamn close to 10k and I would love to hit it during the summer. If I hit it in this coming month, then I will make a full FNAF timeline video for you all. You know, I only make this promise because I don't actually think that it's possible. But, um, you have to prove me wrong. <laughs> in all seriousness, thank you so much for the support uh, and I hope you enjoy the video. In the third part of the Stitch Wraith story, we are introduced to something called agony. Um, the Oxford English Dictionary says that the word agony is a noun meaning extreme physical or mental pain. For example, the strange FNAF AR jigsaw puzzles leave all of us fans in agony. Don't ask me why though, I actually think they're kind of alright. In FNAF, agony is a very similar thing, except it is a physical, emotional energy rather than just an emotion. The example of this that I really enjoyed in this book was with a mirror. Let's say there's a mirror in my living room and I kill my family, I kill my wife and I kill my kids in front of that mirror. Obviously this leaves the victims in extreme pain, extreme agony. Now the mirror saw this happening and as a result the energy of the pain coming from the murders is infused into the mirror. This energy is literally called agony and essentially curses the mirror. Dr. Phineas Taggart collected a load of these items and together he made the Stitch Wraith, which we will talk about a little bit later. So every single death that we see in Five Nights at Freddy's games and the Fazbear's Fright books releases a high amount of emotional energy. The missing children's incident, Charlotte's death, Elizabeth's death, the bite of 83, the bite of 87, the other unknown dead children, the six kids in 1985, William's Springlock incident, the fire in 2023, and the fire to end it all. Every single Fazbear Fright story with a weird animatronic or a strange concept is powered and driven by agony. The list goes on and on, uh, and agony is everywhere. Now, I'm not a scientist in this, in this universe, obviously, but what we can do is ask a few questions about how agony may function. Firstly, I wanna know if agony is the only emotional energy that exists. I wonder if there's a power that exists from a high amount of love and care, um, but I guess at that point, it's, it's just like hormones. It would be interesting if agony could be neutralized by positive emotions, uh, just like how remnant can be neutralized by uh, extreme temperatures. Secondly, the question I'm sure you have is what does ag agony actually do? And how much power over reality does it actually have? It's a hard question to answer, but from what I've seen, I believe agony can do two main things. It can animate the inanimate and it can force hallucinations much like the re like the reality stone in the MCU. Now, reality can be whatever I want. I also believe that the higher the amount of agony, the more powerful things it can do. And we're really gonna dive deep in, into that a bit today. The final question I'm sure many FNAF theorists actually have is what is the actual difference between remnant and agony? To answer simply, I like to think of agony as energy and remnant as mass. Remnant is complicated, uh, but essentially it's a person's soul. When you put remnant into an animatronic, it now has a person controlling it with, with feelings, and one of the most prevalent feelings being anger. When you put agony into a suit, it doesn't have that same level of power. Sure, it may be able to animate things, but remnant is the type of thing we see in the Stitch Wraith, you know, with Jake and Andrew 
actually being two separate souls um, and each with their own thoughts and feelings but controlling one body, the Stitch Wraith. Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. I also just want to say while I'm here, if I'm getting any of this wrong, I am so sorry. Uh, I may have overlooked something or I may have taken things the wrong way. Uh, so I would appreciate any corrections below if you have any. Now the story, what we found, was very confusing but eye-opening for me. I guess this is a follow-up to my previous two videos, so you should probably go and watch them, but I'll explain anyway. In what we found, there was, this, there was only one physically active animatronic, and that was the newly found Springtrap. The night guard Hudson had never had any problems working the night shift at Fazbear's Fright, but as soon as the Springtrap got there, he started getting extremely real hallucinations of previous memories. Of course, these made him really vulnerable and it led to his death. We realised in the other video that yes, Springtrap is the one responsible for the hallucinations, much like he is responsible for the Phantom animatronics in FNAF 3. But how does Springtrap have so much power? Agony. I know that there were multiple Spring Bonnie suits, but let's just say that every single one we've seen and heard of is the same one as Springtrap in FNAF 3. So let's find out how much agony is in the suit. Firstly, there's the bite of 83, and sure, Fred Bear was the responsible for this incident, but Spring Bonnie was on the stage right next to him, so he, he, could, he could still be infused with some of the agony. <laughs> Sorry, I just had a, I had a funny thought of, of someone dying in Minecraft, and you know how the XP orbs go everywhere? and then you can collect them afterwards. I just have I had the thought where where like a child dies in FNAF and then the animatronics all collect the orbs. <laughs> that's, that's just really funny to me. Then of course the other obvious one is Afton getting springlocked in the suit. It's debatable whether Afton truly died in that moment. I personally think it's very clear that he did. But there was blood there, so I mean, there was definitely agony. <laughs> Those two are the very obvious ones, but there is one huge point that makes this so much bigger than it already is. What did William Afton use to kill kids? That's right, the Spring Bonnie suit. So not only did it witness a bite and uh, kill a person itself, but it was also the eyes and ears of Afton during his murders. And from that we can take at least seven incidents we've seen where Spring Bonnie could be infused with more and more agony. There could have been hundreds more in the 40 years from 1983 to, uh, to 2023. So I think it's safe to say that Springtrap is one of the animatronics holding the most energy, allowing him to literally change reality. It now makes even more sense why William Afton was around for so long and could even still be around to this day. But let's talk about what comes after FNAF 3. Afton escapes the fire and then in the next game, we see him in a completely different form as Scraptrap, almost completely powerless too. So what's happened here? Here's just a theory of mine, um, but if we're going with the premise that high amounts of agony means powerful animatronics, the reason Scraptrap doesn't have phantoms around him or anything like that in Pizzeria Simulator is because he doesn't have high amounts of agony. Why not? Because it's a different suit. Now granted, some of that doesn't make much sense, but it's just a theory, uh, and, and I want to hear what you think about that, because that's an interesting thought. This is all quite interesting when you think about it further. Springtrap has been through a lot, but what about all the other animatronics? We've talked about Golden Freddy here before. Um, he's just a suit, no endoskeleton. So how does he teleport? How does he create these hallucinations? Once again, the answer is agony. We've only seen one incident uh, involving Fredbear, and that is the bite of 83. However, like Spring Bonnie, he is one of the oldest animatronics, and if he is actually controlled by two souls, then it makes sense that he probably has a lot of agony in him too. We know from Ultimate Custom Night, the puppet is apparently more aware than the others, and that others are like animals. Uh, additionally, Phone Guy says that the puppet always seems to be thinking, um, so maybe it's all because of the agony. Um, she witnessed the death of Charlotte that night and gave uh, gifts to loads of dead children. <laughs> Circus Baby was created to kill kids. We saw her kill one and we know at least three other people died in Sister Location. 
Her agony could explain her voice in other animatronics in Ultimate Custom Night and why she is more powerful than other animatronics. Heck, whoever was responsible for the bite of 87 must be rich in agony. All of this is really interesting to consider, and I think Agony is the energy that is really powering most of this series. I'm going to leave you with some things to think about for the time being. Firstly, what do you think is more powerful, Agony or Remnant? Secondly, if Agony is able to change what people perceive, then why did Afton create the illusion discs? And finally, the big question, could all of this have something to do with the existence of the nightmare animatronics. They could very well be actual hallucinations created by Agony, and it could change the way that we think about FNAF 4. If you enjoyed this video, all I ask is that you subscribe. Get me to 10k, please. I will be overjoyed if we could do it in the summer. I know we can, I, I know we can. If you have any thoughts about anything that I've said, I would love to hear them in the comments below. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and uh, I'll see you later. Goodbye.